All right, so um, we want to understand costs of production. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, as a manager, you are supposed to understand the cost side of whatever um, thing that you're producing. You need to understand the cost side. You need to understand how your fixed costs will affect your uh, production, how the variable costs will affect your production, and ultimately, how the total cost, the summation of fixed and, and variable, how the total cost is going to affect your, 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 your profit. Okay? Because we understand that uh, profit is a difference between revenue and the total costs. So, it is therefore important for managers to understand the cost structure of their, of their, of their businesses. Okay? So, uh, we, we are going to look at uh, how to get profit maximizing, um, of course, both inputs and outputs. But remember, this topic, this one here is preparing us for uh, production theory. Okay? So, everything that, that we're going to do today uh, or in this session is just preparing us for production theory. So we're just um, preparing for production theory. Okay, so you as a manager, you are supposed to know uh, the profit maximizing inputs. That is if you are looking at it from production perspective. You are supposed to understand the profit maximizing input. But for you to know the profit maximizing input, you are supposed to know the cost of those inputs. You are supposed not to say, my... Um, or short, you should get what we call the profit maximizing input. You are supposed to know that if I get these units of this particular input, if I use this these inputs to produce whatever I'm going to produce, my profit is going to be, to be maximized. Okay. At the same time, we should also know what we call cost minimization. You as a manager, you are supposed to know the combination of both your inputs and also the output. We are supposed to know which combination is better, which combination is going to minimize the costs. Okay? And then there is also what you call the short run and the, the long run. So I'm just, you know, introducing the topic. There is what we call the short run and the, the long run. Okay? So, um, I thought someone was trying to enter. Oh, okay. I don't know, but I had that notification. Anyways, yeah. So, there's what we call the short run and the long run. So, the short run is just a period where at least one of the inputs is fixed. Okay? So, you have one input variable, the other input is fixed. That is the short run. The long run is a production period where all inputs are variable. Okay? So... Short run is just a period where at least one input is fixed, okay? And then the long run is the opposite. All inputs are variable, okay? And then there are what we call multiple cost functions. Anyway, we're going, to, we're going to look at these things in detail, okay? So there are what we call multiple uh, cost functions, okay? And at the same time, there's also what we call a economies of scope so i believe with time or actually by the end of this session we are going to know these things okay so in short let's give it a go okay let's give it a go so we understand that uh, the main reason why businesses exist is to make profit so you produce goods and services for the whole purpose of uh, making profit Okay, so of course, the success of any business requires that managers must know. They must know the optimal amount of the quantities to produce and also they should know the optimal combination of inputs that are supposed to be used. So an input is nothing but, you know, those things that we put in to produce something. 
So for instance, if, I pro if you're producing fritters, your inputs will be the cooking oil, the sugar, the salt, I don't know, the whatever they use to produce fritters. Those will be the inputs. And then the actual fritters, those will be output. So for you as a manager, you are supposed, remember your goal is to maximize your profit, right? But for you to maximize your profit, you must know the best combination of your inputs. One. Two, you should also know the maximum amount of fritters to produce. Because sometimes it's good to produce a lot, but those a lot will come at a cost. So you may find yourself in a situation where, yes, you have produced a thousand fritters, but the cost side has increased. Therefore, it is very much important for managers to know both the combination of inputs and also the optimal amount of output that's supposed to be produced okay so this leads us to what we call the production function okay this leads us leads us to what to call a production function so for us to produce whatever output that we want we need inputs okay so for me to produce the fritters i'm talking about i will need I need to have the inputs. So a production function just shows the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. So it's just a function that defines the maximum amount of output that can be produced with a given set of inputs. In short, a production function is a function that describes the relationship between the inputs and the outputs in short remember we want to minimize the costs so that we can maximize the profit okay so in most cases in most cases to simplify things okay in most cases to simplify things most production functions have got only two inputs capital and labor okay capital and labor so what this shows is that for us to produce q units of output we need to have some units of capital and also some units of labor in short output is a function of capital and labor for me to produce this um, this much uh, output I need two things. I will need to have capital. I also need to have labor. So this is what we call a production function. But, but, get me right? A production function is not as simple as this one appears. Okay, a typical production function can take this form. Let's say Q is equal to, they will complicate things. Let's say 0 0.8 hmm, capital to the power, let's say half. Then labor, uh, let's say, to the power half again. Okay? That is the, our production function. So this thing here is just telling us that output is still a function of two things, capital and labor. Okay? So the general form is this one here. Output is equal to the, is the function of capital and labor. But... It not be this one. This is just the general form. This is just the general form. That's why in, in, in sometimes they say Q is equal to the function of, let's say, the same capital and labor. And then now they put a function to say this is equal to, you know, let's say, 100 capital to the power, whatever power, 3, then labor, Maybe say the power two, and then to complicate things, they even put another term here. Let's say capital labor to the power four. This is the same thing. Okay, it still shows that the output is a function of two things: capital and labor. Where, okay, where this now output is defined to be like this now. So this is our production function. So a production function is just a function that shows the relationship between inputs and output. 
parts okay so it just it just gives us see, the, the, the 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 relationship the maximum amount of output that we can produce from the given set of inputs okay so this is our production function now remember that eh, i've talked about the short run and the, the long run and i've said that eh, a short a, a short run is just a production period where at least one of the factors of production is fixed so in short in the short run you have what we call fixed and the variable factors one factor is going to be fixed the other factors will be variable okay so sh short run is just the production period where at least one of the factors of production is fixed you know i keep on receiving notifications that people are trying to join but uh, when i come here i see that there's nothing i don't know why i don't know if it's my network or whatever it is i don't know um okay let me just log out and join again hey there there's your what's for the fast Is it on? Hi, can you get me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. This is where the issue is. Apparently, people are joining using the other link. Um, <laughs> okay, for today, I'll share this. Uh, the, best uh, the best solution is, solution is to, to, continue, to continue to continue forwarding the the, the the link the which, which we are using we are because, because some people, some people may use other odd links. links. So yeah, always when we have a meeting, it's better you just forward it to the to the group the actual link. Yeah, I think that one is going to help us. <sighs> okay, yeah, I will surely be doing that. Okay, yes, so. We're talking about the, the, the short and the long run. Okay. So uh yeah, yeah. So we said that with the short run, this is a production period where at least one of the factors of production is fixed. And that is why we have what we call fixed factors and the variable factors. So to show that we have or we are producing the short run, we usually say this output is the function of okay so let's say capital labor but then here on top of capital we put a bar this is showing us that well this output i'm producing this out output of course i'm not presenting, <gasps> I'm not presenting. Uh oh that's not sad that's sad that's sad that's sad i thought i wasn't locked out sorry
Okay, can you see the, the, the slides now? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so let me repeat. So we have short run and long run. So the short run is a production period where at least one of the factors of production is fixed, right? And what we do is this. To show that we have or we're producing the short run, we say output is a function of so output is a function of capital and labor where this capital is fixed and to show that it's fixed we put a bar on top there we put a bar on top this shows that uh, capital is fixed and what it is is this in 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 the in the short run it's difficult for you to change the amount of capital that you have but it's easier for you to change the amount of labor that you have okay assuming that you are this firm that is into mining for instance it's difficult for you to change your you know your, your equipment and all those things you know it takes time okay but it's easier for you to hire extra units of labor or to lay to lay off some units of labor that is the reason why capital is always fixed in the short run okay and the labor is uh labor is variable but again there's they usually ask this funny question to say uh how long is the short run okay how long is the short run so there is no specific time frame for the short run as long as during your production period you have one factor which is fixed you are in the short run it can take years it can take 20 years as long as one of your factors of production is fixed you are still producing the short run so there is no specific time frame to say no the short run is equal to two weeks the short run is equal to one day no 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 no. there is nothing of that sort okay so the short run is just a time period where at least one of the factors of production is fixed so this will go on and on until all your factors are variable then you see from producing in the short run then you go to, produ to producing in the long run okay so please 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 okay so the short run is defined as the time frame in which there are fixed factors of production okay there are fixed factors of production so at the same time you should have fixed at the same time you should also have a variable because the short run is a time frame where at least one of the factors of production is fixed yeah okay we at least one of the factors of production is fixed okay yeah yeah so to illustrate this let's assume we have capital and labor okay as the only two inputs in the production yeah and the capital is fixed you see that capital is fixed in the short run so if capital is fixed here they have used the star to show that capital is fixed but in most books they put a bar to show that capital is fixed and then labor is a variable okay yes meaning that the only thing that can change the only thing that you can change in the short run is the units of labor you cannot change the units of capital the moment you start changing the units of capital just know that you are now producing in the long run okay you're not producing in the long run okay so here's now the definition for the for the long run the long run is defined as the time horizon over which the manager can adjust all the factors of production okay so you can now in that case see our production function become this it's a function of capital and labor okay you see there is no bar on any of the factors okay so this shows that both capital and labor are variable you can change the units of capital you can also change the units of labor this can only take place in the long run it is only in the in the long run where you can change the units of both inputs capital and labor in the short run at least one of these must be fixed and in most cases it's capital that is fixed okay it's capital that is fixed okay so <clears throat> so uh, if for instance it takes a company three years to acquire additional capital uh, uh capital machines then the long run for this uh for its management is three years you see so there is no specific time period to say okay the long run is equal to this number of years it the long run will be defined uh, according to the number of years that 
you have taken for you to start changing the unit of that fixed uh, for, for that fixed uh, 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 input so it's not it's not defined to say uh, the long run should be equal to this they usually ask that particular question they usually ask that particular question how long is the long how long is the short run okay so they sh there's no definite uh, time frame for the for the short run okay it, it, it's determined by the time it has taken the firm to start changing the unit of the fixed input so until both capital and labor are variable you are still operating in the short run okay now yes we've talked about the production function we've talked about the short run and the long run but what is it that we use to measure productivity or how do we know that your firm is productive or not okay so in most cases you as a manager you have to understand the productivity of the inputs that you're using in the production process you need to know that, you need to know that okay if i have capital and labor i'm going to produce this much because i know that these units of labor and these units of uh, capital will give me this level of output in short you must be able to know the productivity of the inputs that are using in the production process okay so now we are moving or we are we are, we are integrating uh, or we are now shifting from you know the production function to these three measures of productivity that we use okay so the first one is what you call the total product so you as a manager for you to know the productivity of your inputs pay attention to the total product how what is the total product that you are able to produce from the given inputs that you have that is going to tell you uh, whether or not these inputs are productive okay the other major major that we use is the average product the average product so on average how much is this particular um, input contributing to our output okay on average how much is this particular input contributing to our output that is the average product and the last one is the the marginal product so marginal product comes from the word margin right so you are just looking at the incremental product as you increase for instance the units of labor how is this one unit increase in labor going to affect your total product so that is the marginal product so the moment we start talking about marginal just know we're talking about differentiation we're supposed to differentiate a, a given function okay but things to do with total product average product don't worry about these but there are times uh, okay In a, anyway yeah there are times when they'll give us the marginal and ask us to get the total mm -hmm. so in such cases we use what we call integration but uh, anyway we'll see we'll see if at all there will be need for us to do integration but the thing, look at this, the thing is this, huh? with these courses, the assumption is that you have a mathematical background. That's why the issue is. So you see, um, uh, the logic that we're using is that, like we did with, 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 with differentiation. I knew that we needed to use the concept of differentiation almost everywhere throughout this course. So that's why we had to do the background phase, we had to do integration, sorry, differentiation. And then after I confirmed that people have understood the concept, that's when we moved on to start applying the differentiation. So anyway, yeah, if there will be need for integration, we'll see, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so these are the three measures of productivity that we use. We have the total product, we have the average product, and then we also have the marginal product. So we use these three to measure the productivity of our inputs. Okay, we use these three. So now let's try to put some definitions to these three measures of productivity. The first one is the total product. 
okay so we start of product we are just looking at the maximum amount of output that we can produce from the inputs that we have so for instance if i have uh, the production function which is the uh, of course the function of capital and labor where let's say i have got uh capital and labor let's say four for capital labor what i'm trying to say is if i have and assuming that let's say capital is two and then labor is let's say um, one okay for simplicity sake what total product basically uh, tries to explain is if you have this production function and then you have got two units of capital and a unit of labor how much uh, output can you produce okay so in such a case just get these values plug them in the production function and find the, the value of q that is going to give you the total product that is going to give you the total uh, 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 product okay that is going to give you the total product so total product is just the, the maximum amount of capital and labor okay so what does it total product is just the maximum amount of output that you can produce from capital and labor so it's just the maximum output that can be produced from the units of inputs that you have that is total product okay how about average product you know in most cases you as a manager you are supposed to know say okay on average okay on average each worker that i have here produces this much you're supposed to know on average each capital that i have here produces this much so we so when you are thinking in those lines you are using the concept of average product okay so the interest is in the average productivity of an input okay so for instance a manager may wish to know how much on average how much on average each worker contributes to the total output of the firm you are supposed to not okay so each worker in this particular firm each worker in in, in this business contributes this much to the total output so that is the concept of average product you are looking at you know on average how much is each worker how much is each worker contributing to total output of the firm okay so how do we get the average so average product is just the total product divided by whatever you need whatever uh, factor that you have so let's say it's average product of labor so average product of labor is output per labor which shows that uh, how much is each unit of labor contributing to the total level of output okay if it was the uh, average product uh, of capital it would have been the same thing we say output per units of capital that we have so it's the output per unit of capital okay output per unit of capital if it's labor it's output per unit of labor which means we are trying to understand this from the average point of view we want to understand on average how much is each unit of labor contributing to the to the level of output on average how much is each unit of capital contributing to the total level of output so that is with average product okay that is with the average uh, product okay and then the other concept is that of marginal okay the other concept is that of marginal product and this is where now we apply differentiation so the marginal product is just you're just trying to measure if i increase my input by one unit what will be the impact of this on the total product in short we are trying to understand the marginal impact of this increase in un in, in in the units of uh, input on total 
uh, product how much is my total product going by how much is my total product going to change if i change uh, my unit by one uh, sorry if i change my inputs by one unit that is a marginal product so marginal product is just uh, the change in total product due to a change let's say it's margin, it's marginal product with respect to labor so it's, it's going to be change in total product per change in labor so in short you are just differentiating the um, yeah the output function with respect oh no no yeah, yeah. total product yeah Mm -hmm. you're just going to differentiate them eh? so it's the change in total product okay it's the change in total product per change in labor which is just this one here okay so in short you're just going to differentiate the total, total product function with respect to labor so we these are the measures of productivity and they usually bring some questions on this I bring some questions on this so we just need to understand them okay we need to understand them okay so those are the measures of productivity those are the measures of productivity so this far let me get some feedback um, let me just get some feedback how is it going so far mr. Sinkala Oh, you can't get me. Mr. Marco, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. So far so good. Okay, perfect. So far so good. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right. So, mm, yeah, so with this table here, we're just uh, trying to understand the same concept, the same concepts we have discussed. So I've got units of capital here, I've got the units of whom? Um, uh, labor here. And then we have the change in labor here, okay? So we are saying that if we've got a unit of capital two, okay, then we have... Uh, so as you can see the, the, the presentation is not uh, visible on my side i don't know about others okay now it is visible oh okay 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 yeah, yeah. so i was saying that as you can see here so just from sometimes what they do is this they can bring a table like this one and then now fire us with questions a lot of questions can come from this table okay so the first question could be from this table um explain or is it does this is this film producing in the short or the long run just from this table we're supposed to tell that this film is producing in the short run why because um the the, the value of capital is fixed throughout throughout the production period capital is fixed is two throughout which means that the value of capital is not changing therefore since one of the factors is fixed we are producing in the short in the short run okay as you can see for labor it's changing throughout the production period labor is keeps on changing which means that we are producing in the short run because capital is fixed only labor is variable okay and since only labor is variable then now we can be talking about the change in labor the change in labor okay so check this out um capital is fixed labor is changing so uh, since the value of labor here is zero which means there will be no change whatsoever no wonder that there's a dash there it shows that there will be no change whatsoever okay and since uh since uh, labor is uh, labor is uh, if, uh, zero okay and uh, capital is two 
we know that <laughs> at the end of the day the value of output is going to be zero throughout so here output is zero even the change in capital Oh, sorry, the change in output due to change in labor, which is the marginal product with respect to labor, is going to be zero because labor has not changed. So, if you're producing in the short run, listen to this, if you're producing in the short run, don't expect to start uh, looking for the marginal product with respect to capital. Why? Because capital is fixed. So, capital cannot change. You cannot find the marginal product of capital. Why? Because capital is a fixed factor. It does not change throughout the production period. Okay? So, in case, you know, sometimes they just try to test our understanding, they may bring such a question. Is it possible from this table to create the marginal product with respect to capital? Okay? And then you have to defend it. Okay? Since we're producing in the short run and capital is fixed, then there is no need for us to start looking for the marginal product with respect to capital because capital is fixed throughout the production period therefore we cannot expect to see a change in capital okay so the only thing we can start looking for is the marginal product with respect to okay with respect to 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 labor Okay, and then the other thing is the average, the average. So we have average product, okay, which is the output per labor. So we have the average product with respect to labor. Okay, so what we are saying is that given that we have got capital fixed, labor which is changing, and then you have got the change in labor which is throughout one, 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 one. Labor is increasing by a unit. So as you can see from one to two. 2 to 3 until 11 so it means that the change in labor is 1 throughout okay and then depending on how the production function was for this particular table they are telling us to say that when we have two units of capital and one unit of labor we have the level of output of 76 okay so this is this is this was just given we don't know the production function which they used for them to get this uh, value here these values sorry these values so well, the only thing we are able to see is that uh, when we have got two units of capital okay and uh, and uh, and uh, a unit of labor okay the total level of output will be 76 okay and if the total level of output is 76 the average product sorry the marginal product with respect to labor which is the change in output due to change in labor okay so the change in output is from 0 to 76 which means that the change in output is 76 and then the change in labor it's just from nothing to one which is a one so therefore it makes sense to have a marginal product with respect to labor of 76 what does this mean it means that if i increase my units of labor from 0 to 1 this in this one unit increase in labor will lead to an increase in output by 76 units okay because it's the marginal marginal product so if the if the denominator changes by one unit the numerator will change by 76 units okay remember it's a change in q per change in l so if my labor increases by one unit then my output will increase by 76 units so that's the interpretation of this 76 here and then with the average product it's the total level of output q divided by the units of labor so the total level of output is 76 and the units of labor is one therefore one into 76 is 76 so that is where this 76 came from so it's, it's so the same analysis applies throughout okay the analysis applies throughout so this is how we do the interpretation 
okay so first of all understand what's going on are you producing in the short run or the long run you can tell whether you're producing in the short run or the long run by looking at the nature of the inputs if one of the inputs is fixed that's an that's an automatic you know that you're producing the short run but if assuming that both capital labor were changing they would have known that we're producing in the long run and had we been producing in the long run then it would have made sense to have marginal product with respect to labor and also marginal product with respect to capital but since in this case we're just producing the short run it makes more sense to only have it makes more more okay it makes more sense to 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 only have marginal product with respect to labor okay so please this is how we do the the analysis of this table here okay so the analysis extends to all the values here it's the same the analysis is the same okay before we move let's be sure I did everything is all right mm -hmm. madam Tisenga, are you are you able to hear me yes i'm following okay everything is right right yes okay that's good now how about the graphs and ish they just love these things they just love graphs they'll give us graphs they'll give us functions so that we can do sometimes they'll give us a function tell us to, to, to do a graph from the results of our calculations okay so don't worry you're going to look at all those questions I'm going to try by all means to sample a lot of questions, just as I promised. That we're going to look at past papers, we sample some past papers. We solve these questions. We solve these questions. That's why my target is we finish these slides, and then towards the exams, let's say a month or so before the exams, we just concentrate on solving the past papers. Yeah, we just concentrate on solving the past papers, solving the past papers, dealing with the questions, you know, familiarizing ourselves with the, the questions. That is really going to help us. Okay, how about the graphs now? So, we have total product, average product, and marginal product all in the y axis. Okay, and then we have all. The, va the the units of the variable factor on the x-axis in short we have an x or y plane like this one where this side we have the total product average product and the, the marginal product and then this side we have the units of labor since labor is the only uh, factor that is assumed to be changing because we're producing the short run of course okay now we want to understand how our graphs will look like okay how our graphs will look like so now let's start with total product then we can talk about the average and the the marginal so with total product total product and oh yeah, yeah one thing with mentioning we need to be paying attention to where the graphs are starting from okay we need to be paying attention to where the graphs are starting from so the total product function sorry the total product graph or curve will only start from the first unit of labor why because if we if we for instance assume that we have a production function which looks like this output is equal to uh, let me just use the table uh -huh. the table our table here remember that we only witnessed an a, a positive uh, amount of output when we had labor equal to one okay we only 
witnessed a positive output or oh, moreover eh, anyway let me not even say a positive output because output should always be positive there can never be negative output so we have we we, we have 76 okay when labor is one when labor is one and that's when we had our level of output 76 when labor was zero there was nothing there was zero units of output so in short total product measures the level of output that you are able to produce from the given units of inputs therefore it makes sense for the total product curve to start from or to start at labor equal to one so when labor is equal to one we have that level of output in short this graph this graph we are seeing here has been derived from this table okay so they are just plotting when labor is zero what is the uh, output is zero when labor is one output is 76 when labor is two output is 248 just like that until uh, until when labor is equal to 11 output is 2156 so that's how this uh, graph here uh, came to be. So they were just plotting, 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 plotting. But what I'm interested in is the shape. Okay, I'm interested in the shape of the of the total product uh, curve. So check this out. The shape should always take this form. So we are going to start from this output, from this level, it is going to go like that, and then like that. So this has got or shows the three stages of production. There is the first level which passes at the inflection point. Then there is the second level which passes right at the maximum. And then now there is the third level. Okay, so I will explain this using the, the properly done graph. So now, as you can see, as we are moving from labor is equal to 1 up to labor is equal to 5, we have what we call increasing marginal returns to labor. Now, what does this mean? Increasing marginal returns, it means that every time we increase labor, the increase, okay, the increase in, um, sorry, there's someone who is trying to, to log in. So, what we are seeing is that as we are increasing our, our units of labor from labor is equal to one, or uh, yeah, as we are increasing, okay, until at a point where labor is equal to five, each time we increase the units of labor by this unit, there is an increase in our um, our, 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 our total product, okay. So, we increase labor by one unit, there is an increase in the output in short our output is increasing at an increasing rate so it's more like it's increasing from 2 to 5 from 5 let's say to 10 from 10 to 20 from 20 to 40 just like that so there is increasing marginal returns to labor so as we are increasing the units of labor of course labor is just increasing by one unit right you increase labor by one unit output increases by a you know a higher margin you increase labor by another unit, output increases by a higher margin, just like that. So that is what we call increasing marginal returns to labor. Okay, so that's what we call increasing marginal returns to labor. So what we are seeing is that in the first stage of production, we have what we call increasing marginal returns to labor. Now, if we go to our, um, to our table, okay, if we go to our table, you can see that from labor is equal to 1 up to this point here. Labor is equal to 5. Okay. Let's look at the behavior of marginal product. So, first of all, total product was a 76. Then you increase labor by 1 unit. You have been jumped from 76 to 172. You increase labor by another unit, you have jumped from 172 to 244. Okay, you increase labor by one unit, 
it has jumped from 244 to 292 until uh, you reach at 316. So, from labor is equal to 1 to somewhere up to a point where labor is a, a 5, okay, uh, you have increasing marginal retains. You have increasing marginal retains. Oh, okay, yeah. So when you 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 increase, yeah, yeah. It was supposed to, to use this one. You increase labor by one unit. You have seventy six, right? Another one, you have two forty eight. Another one, you have four ninety two. Another one, you have seven eighty four. I was supposed to analyze using this this column. Sorry. Okay. So in short, throughout this production period, as we are increasing labor from, yeah, yeah, up to the fifth unit, the increase. In total product as a result of this one unit increase in labor is by a higher margin so you have what we call increasing marginal retains so in the first period you have increasing marginal retains now from labor is equal to 5 until labor is equal to 10 in short you are moving from this point to the maximum you have got what we call decreasing marginal retains to labor. Now, as you can see, uh, when labor is equal to 5, you have 1,100. Uh, okay? When labor is equal to 6, you have 1,416. In short, yes, labor is increasing, but this increase is at a decreasing rate. Okay? Output is increasing, but the, this increase is at a decreasing rate. It's more like, let's assume I've got small, small numbers here. It's more like labor is increasing, let's say, when when you had 6. Let's just use small numbers to avoid this confusion here. When labor is 6, your output is at, is at 10, for instance. You increase your labor from... Uh, 6 to 7 yes your output has increased but it has increased to, to let's say uh, 15 the difference between 10 and 15 is 5 okay again you increase your labor from 7 to 8 let's say that your output has increased from 15 to let's say 17 yes total product has increased from 15 to 17 but look at the increase the increase is just by 2, but earlier on it was by 5. So yes, output is increasing, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. And that is what we call decreasing marginal returns to labor. With the increasing marginal returns to labor, it's more like you increase your labor from 0 to 1. Output jumps from 0 to, from 0 to 10. You increase from 1 unit to 2 units. Your output jumps from 10, let's say, to 25. So remember, the first increase was, was just by 10 units, but the second increase is now by 15. So with increasing marginal returns, the total product increases at an increasing rate. But with decreasing marginal returns, total product increases at a decreasing rate. So that's the difference between the two. That is the difference between the two. Okay, so in the first stage, in the first stage, we have increasing marginal returns to labor. In the second stage, we have decreasing marginal returns to labor. Until maximum. Then just after maximum, we have what we call negative now. We have negative. Where total product is now decreasing. So now, the question is, okay, why are we discussing this? Think, think, you know, uh, look at it as a manager. You as a manager, you are supposed to know the maximum amount of workers you should hire. It's not every month that you're supposed to bring in a new person. It's not every year that you're supposed to change or you're supposed to, you know, increase your, your workforce. Because, check, as you're as you increasing the, the workers, yeah, 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 your output is increasing, of course, at a decreasing rate from uh, from worker 1 up to worker 5. Your output is increasing at an increasing rate. Okay, then you decide to, you know, keep on adding the number of workers. Yes, your output is increasing, but now at a decreasing rate. 
okay you do that you do that until the 10th waker then because you don't understand the managerial economics you say, ah, okay let me add another one you bring in another person that person will now be bringing the negative output which means that he, he will now be, because you have you, you now have a lot of workers so they are getting into each other's way productivity is reducing they're just chemicaling you know telling stories and all those things output is decreasing okay so therefore this is the reason why we're discussing this today we want to so now where we are going we'll be using a function uh-huh we'll be using a function to tell that the maximum amount of labor that i can hire is this much beyond this point i'll have negative returns okay so you as a manager are supposed to know to say the maximum amount of workers i'm supposed to hire in this particular firm or in this particular company is 10 beyond the 10 workers productivity is going to hit the negatives okay so this is how the total product curve looks like okay that's the general uh, format of a total product curve okay um let me get feedback so uh how is it going anyone is free to just you just turn on your mic and then yeah you speak how is it going so far Uh oh, Madam Tisen. Uh, sorry, your, your, your explanation is is very good. The only the only uh, the only thing on my part is uh, there are some things that I'm attending to, so I may seem as if I'm not following. But your explanation is good, and I know I will get more clarity with the recording. Oh, okay. Something in the messages. <laughs> Sorry, Madam, Madam Miss. Oh, okay. No, okay. That's good. All right. So, how about the? Let's now come to the average and marginal. So, one thing we should not forget or one thing that's worth mentioning is that there is a question that usually comes concerning the relationship between average and the marginal product okay and this question is usually phrased like phrased like this illustrate graphically the relationship that exists between average product and marginal product after that the next question will be explain your graph okay so what it is is this the logic is simple the logic is simple okay as long as okay as long as marginal products of labor or when marginal product of labor is increasing average product of labor will also be increasing when the marginal product of labor is decreasing average product of labor will also be decreasing and the two or in short so listen to this as long as marginal product which is this upper curve the one on top is increasing average the one down will also be increasing and the two will cross at the maximum point of average product let me just erase this okay so what we are seeing is that as long as this marginal product curve this one is increasing it pulls you know the average product up okay so in short you as the manager you should know that as long as this increment the increase in output as a result of the increase in labor is positive in short as long as each worker is producing a positive marginal product then on average 
each worker's productivity is increasing. Okay? Sometimes they want us to relate. So they give us, let's say, a scenario, and then they want you to relate now. You more like apply this to that particular scenario. Okay? So what we should know is that as long as the, the marginal product of labor is, 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 is above, okay? So as long as the marginal product of labor is above average product, then average product will also be increasing. Okay? It will also be increasing. And this curve, the marginal product of labor, is going to cross. Okay? In short, the, 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 where, where average product is at maximum, okay? Where average product is maximum, at that particular point, it must equal marginal product. In short, uh, we are saying that average product of labor is equal to marginal product of labor at the maximum point of average product okay which is this point here where the two are intersecting it means that at that particular point they are equal they are the same the values are same okay so at the maximum point of average product okay so average product is this the here this comma curve Okay, so uh, at the maximum point of this comma cave, which is that particular point, so at that particular point, this cave is equal to marginal product. Okay, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, yeah, so this is what happens. So that is something that we should not forget in case, in case of cases. Okay, but I'm pretty much sure that. At the moment we start looking at past paper questions, all this will come, will start making sense. Yeah, all this will start making sense because we'll now be, you know, using the questions to apply the concepts and all those things. Okay, so we have discussed the nature of total product and we have also discussed the nature of these two. So if you want to confirm, we are saying that when labor is seven, when labor is seven, Marginal product and average product must be the same. Let's co let's confirm using the table if this is true. So when labor is seven, okay. When labor is uh, where is labor? Yeah, yeah, this is labor. Labor is seven. Marginal product is this. Um, where is that? 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 So labor is seven. It's supposed to be this. How come? Because they're only equal here. They're only equal here. Allah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, it's like initially, because the, the, the data that we have here is showing that only when labor is eight. That's where it need, uh, marginal product and average product is equal. So I don't know if there was an issue with with, with the the drawing of the <laughs> of the graph, but the actual thing should be uh, at at that particular point. <laughs> at that particular point, these two must be the same. So the two forty four and the two forty four must be the same, which is when labor is got eight. So I don't know why this graph is. Um, at, at, at is not at parity with the with the with the <laughs> with the table okay so but the what we should know always is that at the maximum point of the average product the marginal product oh yeah at the maximum point of the average product okay average product must be equal to marginal product okay yeah so I think I've just remembered just about now that there's a question that I did when I was in third in third year managerial economics which was coming from this. So I'll just have to look for that question and obviously we should do it with you people here. Then that will also help us do the revision. Okay. So we have our total products. We've discussed the nature of the total product curve. And we've also discussed the relationship that as long as marginal product is rising, okay, average product should also be rising. And as long as the marginal product is falling, then uh, 
of course uh, this so as long as this guy is increasing this guy should also be increasing when he starts falling until the maximum point of average product beyond that point when the marginal product is falling then average product should also be falling one two is that there is a point where these two caves must be equal and that point is a point where they cross in short at that particular point where they're crossing they should be equal they should be equal okay so at that particular point they should be equal okay so oh yeah so initially it was supposed to be when labor is eight because when labor is 80 the marginal product with respect to labor is 244 and the average product is also 244 which should be that point there okay so i'm just wondering why we have a seven here instead of an eight okay so that is what we should not forget all the times at all the times we shouldn't forget that okay okay cool so uh when we st the moment to introduce cost okay these two uh this uh, this graph the mirror image of this graph explains the cost side okay the mirror image of this graph explains the cost side so we're going to see that the moment we start doing cost we're going to see that we just flip this graph then we'll be, we'll be analyzing total cost average cost marginal cost and all those things okay so the phases of marginal returns i think we've, we've explained okay that uh, we have increasing marginal we have got decreasing margin and then we've got negative marginal returns so the range over which marginal product increases is known as the increasing marginal returns okay as the usage of labor as we keep on in increasing our labor increasing our, la uh, our labor we are going to witness what we call decreasing or diminishing marginal returns where yes total product is increasing but at a decreasing rate okay total product is increasing but at a decreasing rate okay beyond if we continue hiring more and more workers after some point using additional units of labor actually reduces total product so you hire an extra person thinking that you know this is going to affect your productivity positively alas you end up having a negative product productivity people now because they're a lot they're getting into each other's way they're fighting you know they're gossiping instead of working at the end of the day the fame is negatively affected okay and that is what you call the negative marginal returns okay that's that's what you call the negative marginal uh, returns okay so yeah in short we should be able on our own we should be able to do this on our own okay like you just get a pen start talking to yourself sometimes it's it, it helps you start talking to yourself okay so if i have labor here i have total product average and marginal here okay then you do the graphing then you start asking yourself questions answer them it helps okay so yeah um, mm -hmm. uh -huh. i wanted us to start the cost side which i think we can because this is 20 past 9 so we still have 10 minutes together so let's let's introduce cost yeah i think we can introduce cost in the next 10 minutes okay so what we've done so far from the time we started was just looking at you know from the from the output side okay from the output side if we are the famous supposed to know what your you know total product is what your average product is and what your marginal product is you should also know you know that you you, you can either be producing in the short or in the in the long run you know those things yeah in the short run one factor must be fixed and in the long run all factors must be variable you know and that you know from the graphs you should be able to do the total products on your own yeah you should also be able to do the average and the marginal try to explain about the relationship yeah marginal as marginal is increasing average is also, is also expected to be increasing 
until at a point where marginal crosses the average then you know as as margin is dropping average product will also be dropping yeah you know those things yeah then now we are safe to start talking about the cost side of this whole thing so just like output we said that we've got the fixed and variable inputs right even under the cost side we have fixed costs and variable costs okay so we also have fixed and variable costs in short total cost comes from two factors there's the fixed cost and also there is the variable cost okay so total cost comes from two there is the fixed and also the variable cost so fixed costs are those costs that do not vary with the level of output it's just fixed okay you pay it once and for all you forget you pay it you forget you just start dealing with the variable costs so a fixed cost is a cost that is only paid once in short you pay it and forget it's fixed cost so a fixed cost does not vary okay with a level of output and it can it can be eliminated only you can only eliminate a fixed cost by shutting down you shut down you forget completely with a fixed cost okay but variable costs vary with a level of output so the more you produce the more you should expect your variable cost to be so variable cost changes with the, the level of output fixed costs do not change okay fixed costs do not change but variable costs vary with the level of output as you are producing okay in short as output is changing variable cost should also be changing all right and then there is also what we call average total cost so look at this we have defined total cost to equal fixed cost plus variable cost therefore average Thank you. 